Hello everyone, uh, I'm Rinzing Ongmu Sherpa. I'm doing my research from JNU New Delhi. Um, firstly, I would like to thank you all for showing your uh, unconditional support um, for my first video that was on domestic violence in this channel. Uh, today, I'll be talking about yet another important topic, which is also a topic uh, quite personal to me, that is on obesity. When you go by the definition of World Health Organization, uh, obesity is something where a person accumulates excessive fat because of which it takes a toll on their health. And it is um, in simple excess body fat um, around um, your body. Uh, so uh, when you actually want to look at uh, the body fat and compare it, they take the body mass index. Body mass index is simply when your weight is taken in uh, the form of kilograms and your height is taken in the form of meter. And when you actually calculate that and divide your weight by height, uh, you get your body mass index. Um, so body mass index, which is... Um, equivalent to 25 or between uh, 29 so you are overweight but if your body mass index is um, equal to 30 or above 30 you are obese so i would also like to point out that most of the deaths which is caused um, due to your body um, text um, your, your bmi is mostly when you are obese or overweight uh, there are more chances of risk in relation to when you are underweight so most of the diseases and infections that are associated with um, ob being obese or being overweight is of course hypertension, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and your lung functioning is also hampered uh, and many other, um, you know, uh, we, we are, they are very susceptible to such kind of uh, diseases and uh, illnesses and cancers which are mostly um, uh, perpetuated because of uh, such obesity condition is a pancreas cancer and lung cancer so um, a person uh, you know who has obesity or who is overweight are at, are at the same time walking towards their death themselves so it's very important I would like to point out to also keep checking your um, blood pressure level and your diabetes because you, you never know when you actually you know become uh, you know victim of it so globally when you look at it also 2 billion adults and children uh, die because of uh, such um, um, you know diseases and illness, illnesses which are caused due to uh, being overweight or being obese um, out of which 400 uh, sorry it's 4 million people they die um, they have died over the years from 2015 because of such uh, illnesses which is mostly caused because you are obese or because you are overweight um, so that's why when you look at uh, the condition of COVID here, um, most of the underlining pattern among the COVID patients are also obesity. And uh, most of the renowned hospitals like AIMS and the doctors there have also stated that five to six out of five to six people um, uh, who are COVID patients have one underlining reason that is obesity. Most of the people who are, um, you know, uh, COVID patients have this underlining problem and when you are obese or overweight, you have higher chances of being or dying out of COVID, um, you know, COVID because your lung functioning itself is hampered a lot and uh, you ha you your breathing problem, um, you have a lot of breathing problem even when you do minor physical activities, you feel weak and you your immunity system is reduced. So obviously you are at a higher chance of getting COVID also and when you are kept under a ventilator, the person with obesity has higher chances of you know sadly dying and not being able to uh, you know um, um, take it further because they already have this underlying problem of lungs functioning so um, that is there and when you look at India and China so these, these have been um, two of the countries who have uh, you know uh, been in the fifth position uh, so far uh, when you come to world uh, obesity um, the highest number of obesity population is India and China are in the fifth position India India when you look at it during the 1975 um, era there were less number of population who were uh, obese 
but when you look at it now like 2014 um, there are around 20 20 million women uh, who are obese that is almost equivalent to 5.3 percent of the world obese population and when you look at men there are 9.8 million population that would come up to around um, seven sorry 3.7 percent of the world obese population uh, when you recently look at uh, from the result of uh, sorry from the research of uh, Lenchet journal uh, you actually see that um, USA tops the list of um, the world obesity population followed by China and after that you have India. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, obese population in our own country which is to be taken seriously now. And from the 1980s onwards, the world population has also seen a spike in the curve of people dying out of obesity, people being victim to obesity, child obesity is also rampantly increasing. So when you look at such cases and when you look at our lifestyles now, that is during the lockdown, you can actually see how we have been shifting intentionally or unintentionally from having a very busy, healthy, so to say, lifestyle to having a very sedentary, very restrictive lifestyle and which has also taken to most of the people, um, you know, they've been demotivated because of such an aspect and demotivation also leads you to not doing any such physical activity and sometimes, you know, when you don't have anything to do you seek your pleasure you seek your comfort in eating binge eating and uh, you know all that <clears throat> so because of this um, uh, it is you know a signaling red light towards where are we heading our lifestyles which is continuously changing within the lockdown um, which is very dangerous so when you look at all these aspects so the question is what can be done so actually there are two two uh, pertinent um, reasons and the two pertinent cause, causes and also solutions behind what can be done. Firstly, it is from the personal level and secondly, it is also a public responsibility. When you look at it from a personal level, of course, the first thing that comes is uh, people who have been obese or people who have not been adopting a very healthy lifestyle or even if you are underweight. So the main, re main thing that you need to do is to bring a personal change. And when you look at personal change, your personal change towards a healthier lifestyle also depends on the environment that you surround yourself with. So if you want to take this transformative journey towards um, becoming healthier and adopting a healthy lifestyle, it is also very important to cover, I'm sorry, surround yourself with people who encourages you throughout. Firstly, it is important to look at uh, what is the motivating factor behind you changing uh, your lifestyle from being unhealthy or being careless to being and uh, adopting a healthier lifestyle so that motivating factor might sometimes be you know because you're not being able to wear dresses or clothes of your choice because of your um, because you're overweight or sometimes mostly females or uh, so mostly uh, women become victim of body shaming most of the time it is their immediate close ones who are constantly telling them uh, you know shaming their um, you know telling them they're fat they're not perfect so all that so anything that strikes you and that makes you question your own identity as to what have i become so that is that can be a motivating factor personally for me i would say uh, that um, my motivating factor was because my own grandma whom i was very close to died because of prolonged hypertension diabetes and um, um, because of that she we lost her and um, and she used to continuously tell us as to how important it is to you know adopt a healthier lifestyle from the very beginning from when you're very young so after that after we lost her I actually took it very seriously and I also was a victim of you know people body shaming me continuously especially the close ones which had actually taken a toll on my um, you know self-esteem and confidence um, I had very low self-esteem then so that is when I decided that it is high time that I should change my lifestyle and when you actually firstly take uh, you know a ch decide to change you really don't know how to start what to do because you are firstly very demotivated and also secondly to bring the motivation is very difficult and thirdly you don't know how to go about so what I simply did is I made use of the uh, technology that we are uh, ex we have access to that is the internet i looked at various videos from 
influencers who are common people like us who became influence influencers surely because they uh, took this uh, difficult journey and uploaded their videos so i looked at a few of somia's global tales video and emmy wong's video which also gives exercises and also nutritional diets so that was very uh, motivating for me and of course i had in mind that it's not very easy to follow whatever these people are following because they might be you know privileged in their own manner and for us we might not have access to most of the healthy products that they have mentioned so i uh, also realized eventually that your weight loss journey is something that you craft on your own and your weight loss journey is something that is very unique to you another hurdle that comes up when you actually take up this journey is like your friends are continuously telling you not all of them but a few of them whether in a, a positive light or a negative light i really don't know but they tell you they remind you that you should love yourself and embrace yourself for any body type you have and not you know confine your confidence to your own body and uh, sometimes you tend to believe in that but uh, how can you believe in something uh, you know which you yourself you're not sure of because you can only believe in something when you think you yourself can believe in such an idea and you cannot believe in something when which you feel bad about you are feeling bad about being overweight being obese so that is not something you cannot love yourself when you are that it's like you're deceiving your own self so i would suggest you that you stay away and abstain from you know taking it as a motivated motivating factor because it's not motivating and um when you uh, look at uh, you know the um first month of uh, the uh, you know the first month that you take up this uh, healthy uh, regime is most difficult because in the first month most of the in general i'm speaking and few of them might see the results in the first month but the first month is for few and most of us very difficult month because you hardly see the results because your body is just undergoing a transformative change to shed some weight and most of the people also give up during the first month because they are confused they're not losing weight they're just shedding sweat and hard work not uh, reaping any results so they give up so but that is a big mistake most of the people make because from the second month most of the people uh, start losing weight uh, for me i had kept a, a weekly aim of losing at least 1 kg per week which really worked for me and you are out also like to stress that uh you know diet and taking shortcuts towards this journey is a big no because uh, you know um cheap meals is fine because um, what i also did i lost 13 kg in 9 months which was a very slow and a very patiently carved out journey for me and it really worked out and even till it was in 2018 and even till now i have maintained it so far and um and cheap meals is very important because uh, when you want to eat say sweets or pastries or cake you do not uh, you do not you know just completely shut it down like you do when you are on a diet you instead take a very small portion of it that what what will it do it will trick your brain into having a taste of what it is craving for but at the same time in portion which uh, you know um, Uh, does not allow the whatever you eat to accumulate around your belly or wherever you put on fats so um you know dieting is a big no because there are so many fancy diets like keto diet water diet intermittent fasting many kinds of diets but what happens is that when you deprive yourself of something it starts craving for it more so within a week or two you go back to the same regime of unhealthy lifestyle or maybe in a much rampant rate than what you were previously doing um so um just uh, sharing with you all a very personal chart of what i did was like when you wake up in the morning it's very difficult to take water at least two cups of water lukewarm water uh, what i usually did is i have started taking apple cider vinegar because it also helps in a lot of factors like bowel movements digestion metabolism it improves your skin quality hair quality so that i have made it a part of my life so you can also do that on either you can drink water um sugar flour that is maida and salt uh, you have to reduce it to a major extent uh when you look uh, when you talk about tea if you are a tea lover of course you can have half a cup of tea with sugar or salt anything preferable but it is always advised to take green tea uh, twice a day or thrice a day but for people who have low blood pressure I would suggest to take it only once a day uh vegetables which are locally available and freshly available seasonally available as well as fruits are very important to be put in your diet and it's very important to stay hydrated um at least take 2 liters of water 
um, slowly you can increase it to three four five and if you do not like to have plain water you can also add in flavors like lemon or tulsi water or haldi water anything that uh, suits your preference i would say and um um lastly i would also like to say that if you like biscuits or sweets or anything you know just try to look at the labels if there is less sugar or 50 percent less sugar so you can replace your usual habits of taking biscuits and sweets and chips with um you know lesser number of uh, you know the unwanted stuffs like sugar and salt uh, a big no is for beverages and alcohol first month uh, of your um, diet first month you should really abstain from alcohol slowly you can uh, take it but in a lesser proportion and um, salt flour and sugar again and chemical flavoring is a big no uh, so when you come to exercise, firstly I feel like it's very important to understand your body. Where does your fat accumulate more? Which area has stubborn fats? Your body shape, your body type, everything is necessary to be understood. So of course it's not something you can push yourself towards understanding. It comes eventually during the first month. The most important thing is don't be hard on yourself in this journey. Go with it, go with, it with patience because with patience comes consistency. Another important factor is also the kind of exercise you like. Um, that can mostly be exp uh, sorry, um, experimented with in the first month and um, the timing and the time when you actually feel fresh to do exercise or where you look forward to doing your exercise is also very important so just craft your own comfort uh, you know timetable or any kind of exercise like yoga pilates gym swimming uh, zumba uh, there are many kinds of exercise or simply you go to youtube and you know you look at the videos from emmy whom uh, she gives exercise on every part of your body like thighs stomach arms um, anything um, you want to exercise more on so uh, she's mentioned it elaborately so that is important and when you actually are in this phase of um, doing exercise and um, you know your diet check and all that one thing is like you of course feel demotivated sometimes you just feel like moving everything out and going back to your lifestyle because change is something that is difficult for everyone in every i mean like in every group or every rung you know change is something that is people do not like it but what you can do is when you feel demotivated you call your family members or your friends um, you know who are always encouraging you to never look back or what i simply did is i just you know went back to one of amy Wong's video or one of uh, somia's video to look at their own journey of weight loss and how it was not very different from what we are going through with demotivation and uh, hurdles it was same so that kept me very motivated um and um, when you look at uh, the the other thing what i would like to stress on is the first month is like i said the toughest month and it is also the month where you blame yourself for what you've put yourself into that is uh, overweight body obesity and you blame yourself for you know have being so careless with yourself and now you are facing the brunt by working so hard to get back or working so hard to bring a change um, so stop blaming yourself because blaming yourself is very it's a very toxic thing to do there will, won't be any envi environment for change and I would like to point out here that uh, your um, like obesity is not your own personal responsibility it is also a public responsibility because in a country which produces unhealthy food double amount of unnecessary unhealthy food and which celebrates the culture of street food fast food junk food so it's very impossible for us to abstain ourselves because wherever we go you see alcohol which is so freely accessible with very less policy restrictions on it so we are lured towards it's very easily a culture where parents are encouraging their children to you know eat sweet pumping their kids with excess sugar so they grew up believing that it might not be as bad as it seemed because it was their parents who had you know pumped it on them so the culture continues with their own children uh, so what I simply want to say is that all of us are going through change of a every kind because the world itself is changing so why not let's uh, you know take it as a public responsibility and also put some policy uh, you know restrictions or strict um, restrictive norms to reduce uh, obesity and put restrictions on few of the unnecessary food which is being uh, you know produced and because given the fact that how food is promoted to us especially these chemical flavoring food it's very impossible for us to abstain from buying all that and um, i think it's very much a public responsibility 
because if you do not do it now and if we do not work towards it now together it will be very difficult for us so i think uh, it is high time that we should work towards you know providing a safer food environment providing a safer lifestyle if not for us at least for the future generation and as much try to decrease obesity uh, and let's take it as a public responsibility as well as a personal responsibility. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, please like, uh, share and subscribe to our channel.